So, um, I'm outside in the garden, uh, which is really nice today, this autumn morning that we have. Um, and I wanted to speak about the idea of authenticity. Because I think on LinkedIn we've been seeing a lot... Oh, I mean, I guess it's, it's, it's been a constant theme, I guess, in, in our corporate spaces of authentic leadership, authentic self, bringing your whole self. And I think that what I've noticed a lot is the anxiety that the idea of authenticity creates and the, the need to be authentic. And in our webinars last week, I was challenged because someone was, you know, talking about one's authentic, we were talking about identity and one's authentic self. And I think it's important for us to push, not only to critique the idea of authenticity, but to, to push our understanding and to challenge ourselves. And I think a, the best example is really my nail polish, right, which kind of looks a bit gross today. But what I think is important for us to remember is that not everyone has access or the privilege of being and bringing their authentic selves into every spaces. In that sometimes our authentic identities are actually punished, are seen as bad, are seen as less valuable. And these obviously run along historical lines of who is seen as valuable and who isn't. That blackness and people of color are not seen as valuable. That speaking in a certain accent is not seen as intelligent. That being a bit effeminate is not seen as masculine and thus competent. That being too dominant as a woman is seen as being overly assertive or being too aggressive. So what we have done is through the construction of identity, we've created good and bad ways to perform an identity. You know, there's the good black person, there's the good woman, there's the good gay person who's very quiet and not always talking about their partner and throwing the gay in people's faces, right? So I want us to challenge the idea of authenticity. So when we say, bring your full selves, bring your authentic selves, let's understand that not everyone has the privilege to bring their authentic selves. That certain aspects of our identity that are authentic, that are truly us, is going to be policed, is going to be punished. And that certain displays of an authentic self of the good man or the good white person or the good straight person is going to get rewarded. So let's think about the relationships that we build, the structures within our organizations that reward and punish certain displays of identity and of authenticity. So really it's just to say let's not kind of buy into this idea of authentic self that being your authentic self is always going to be the best thing in an organization. No. An individual is always going to calculate in their very complex algorithm about which identities, which roles, which parts of themselves, which parts of their authentic selves they're going to bring understanding that our organizations privilege, reward, and punish certain behaviors and identities and roles and authentic selves, um, given our historical constructions of what we see as valuable. <laughs>